And welcome live to the Campus View Club, the GBU Life Campus View Club here at the Peterson Event Center, which is buzzing because the first of 12 high school championship games that will take place over the next couple of days will happen. Panthers at Boston College for the final road game of the regular season. 5.30 pregame, 6 o'clock. I can't believe we're at that point already. Yeah, it's, it's going fast. It, but this is the grind part of the year, and uh, we need to be ready to grind it out. <laughs> Does the, do you get to kind of this point where are you through the grind and then you can kind of see, okay, like there's some stuff coming ahead or? No, you're still in it. Still in I it. mean, you're still in it, you know, this time, especially, you know, we have leap year, so we have an extra day of February. <laughs> um, but just this time until you get to the postseason, you know, it's just, and it's a lot going on in our league right now, like right there in the middle, everyone is kind of scrambling for position. Uh, but we need to play well. That's the biggest thing. You know, we've we've been pretty good on the road all year. We've lost the last two on the road. We need to get back to how we were a little bit earlier. You met with the guys earlier. Uh, what was the message to them going forward after Tuesday? Well, I just told them I was really honest with them. Like, we had an unbelievable opportunity, and we blew it. And that's that's on us. I mean, it's not taking anything away from Clemson. They're a very good team, and they played well, but we played well. Like, we were ready, and we played really, really hard. Um, we, we just have to be able to finish. You know, I, I showed them. So, we missed nine layups. Nine. <laughs> we missed seven in the first half, and I stopped it after the seventh one. We were up 27-20. Bob goes in, gets by his guy. He has a wide-open left-handed layup, and we miss it. That was the seventh one, and I stopped it, and I said, if we make all of our layups up to this point, the score right now was 41-20. to 20. Game's over with because Clemson's not a team that plays from behind like that. And so we were ready to play. Like, we defended them well. We, we, we followed the game, but we did all of that stuff. We have to be able to finish, especially when you're playing against a really good team and a really good defensive team. When you get those opportunities, you have to capitalize. We didn't. We went into the half. I think we were up four. We should have been up more. Um, they made a run. I like how we responded. We made a run. We came back. We took the lead. And then we had some lapses defensively with game plan defense um, that we can't have, especially when you're playing against a really right. good team on the road. And they took advantage of it. Um, it was 61-60, you know, we got called for a foul late. Uh, they made two free throws. We got a great look. Carrington missed the pull-up jump shot in the paint. And then they shot a three that hit every part of the thing and dropped in. Um, and so, again, we put ourselves in a position where we had an opportunity, but we have to be able to finish, and that's on us. You like the resilience. I know you have all year. Do you feel good about the resilience of this I do. Game? I do. I do. I mean, I think seeing it, they saw it. We went over the the defensive lapses that we had. They made us pay for it um, every time. That's what good teams do. Um, and so it just shows that our, our, our focus and we got to be dialed in and locked in. And this time of year – one of the things you have to beat is tired. Like everyone's – you have to be able to push through and fight through that, and so we have to get better in that area. One of the things that did happen today came out this afternoon are your opponents, your ACC opponents for next year, home and away, North Carolina, Syracuse, and Louisville. The home games, Boston College along with those three. Boston College, Cal, Clemson, Georgia Tech, Miami, Stanford – which still is weird, and Virginia. The road games, Duke, of course, Florida State, NC State, Notre Dame, SMU, Virginia Tech, and Wake Forest. What are your <laughs> impressions when you hear those? I know you're getting ready for BC, but just especially to have, like, Stanford yeah. coming here in Cal. Yeah, it's, it's going to be different and weird, um, but just very, very different uh, to, you know, two completely different brands of basketball coming from the West Coast and Cal and Stanford. Um, you know, SMU is a little bit similar to basketball on the East Coast, especially with the way Rob plays. Rob Lanier is the head coach at SMU, and they have a really good team this year, and he's a very good coach. 
Um, but it's also exciting, you know, just to have something new, to have something fresh. Stanford is one of the biggest brands um, in all of college athletics. And so to have them here and, you know, Cal is a great school and has a really good tradition. Um, they're trying to build it back. Mark Madsen, I think, will do an unbelievable job there. So to have them here will be pretty cool. How many tickets has Jalen already asked for, for SMU? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Getting back to Texas, uh, you know, I'm sure he'll have a whole crew there. It, it, finally, is, is there a recruiting advantage to that? I mean, you get just people to see, although with television, I mean, you can see any team you want. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I'm hopeful that it can be. You know, we had, uh, when we played uh, our last home game, who do we play? Virginia Tech. Yeah. We had Jason Matthews here. You know, and, and it was really cool to have him at shoot around in the sun. And he's a West Coast guy. So maybe playing at Stanford and Cal can get us in some doors out there. You know, coming up, if you if the dictionary was audible and you looked up Pitt, there would be one voice <laughs> that would tell you about the University of Pittsburgh. That voice had a major announcement today. And we're going to talk with Bill Hillgrove next on the Jeff Cable Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Welcome back to the GBU Live Campus View Club here at the University of Pittsburgh at the Peterson Events Center. The voice of the Panthers, Bill Hillgrove, joins us right now. And Bill announced this morning that he is retiring from the Steelers, but still full-time with the Panthers, which is good news for all of us that Bill is going to continue as full-time voice of the Panthers. And, Bill, my first question to you is, Aren't you going to miss those schedule releases when you try to figure out how to get from Winston-Salem to Seattle? Yeah, uh, Jeff, uh, I got a little tired of trying to emulate O.J. Simpson running through airports. <laughs> First of all, I didn't have his speed. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's – now I don't care what time the pit kickoff is. I still will have half a weekend left <laughs> and all of July and most of August, and that was at the basis of the decision. How – blessed do you feel and and being able to do all three sports oh it, it as a pittsburgh kid who grew up rooting for these teams uh you know it's everything uh, and so the passion comes naturally and uh, you know i it, it's a dream come true i mean i often would pinch myself saying are you really in this position full-time announcer play by play for uh, the two big football entities in town and now the biggest basketball entity. Are you kidding me? But it's, it's worked out really well. And I will tell you this, Jeff, those 30 years went very quickly. Hmm. When did you know you wanted to do play-by-play, -play, Bill? Uh, as a young kid growing up in Garfield, I could see the lights of Forbes Field, and I thought to myself, I'd love to be part of that someday, thinking that I had – the ability to be a major league baseball player. Well, I found out at a very young age, I wasn't the best <laughs> player in my neighborhood. So, you know, that career, forget about it. And so I was able uh, to uh, combine my uh, passion for sports with uh, a, a career that I found out at a young age, I had ability on this side of the microphone. And it, it, it was a perfect blend. It couldn't have been, it couldn't have been better for me. Is it true you used to you used to practice and you would work on it with your brother John? Like you guys would would like think about or pretend oh, to do yeah, games. My dad, my dad, I had a microphone that was wireless to um, a, a set of speakers, and uh, my dad put W H I L. Uh, he put a very nice sign out on the d bedroom door, and so I'd sit and, and watch kids in my backyard play, and I'd describe the action. So yes. Uh, it started at a very young age. Wow. I know, I know different people have different philosophies. What has always been your philosophy in calling games and doing play-by-play? -play? I'm the eyes of the sightless. And some of my best reaction has been from sightless people. And if you're listening on the radio, you know, you don't see what's happening. You rely on the spoken word. And that is so satisfying to get good reaction from people who don't have sight who tell me you put me right at the game uh, that is very very rewarding bill you mentioned that and we're talking to the voice of the panthers bill hillgrove you mentioned how blessed you are when when you see highlights of dorsett or marino or fitzgerald or donald or 
Lane or Dewan Blair or Ronald Ramon or Blake Hinson and you hear your voice attached, do, does it still – do you still for a second – think about that or has it just become so natural over the years it's pretty special uh, especially getting to know all the people you mentioned and to be able to interview them and and then you know see them go on from university to uh, great professional careers uh, it, it is very rewarding and not only that but to see them go on to great careers you know Pitt has produced a lot of fine athletes but they've equally produced a lot of fine people who've given back to society and back to the community. And I think that's rewarding as well. I'll, I'll bring up Curtis Aiken, my basketball partner, as an example. You know, he's a huge success uh, in, in the real game of life. And uh, I think he thanks the University of Pittsburgh for the opportunity uh, to put him in that position. Bill, I know you've always loved calling basketball what have you really enjoyed about the last couple of years in watching this group? And they're not the same. They're different faces. But to watch the way that this, this team has played or, or this program has played over the last couple of years. The kids like and love each other. Uh, that's what I noticed last year when we were uh, waiting uh, because of a delay going to Dayton for the play-in game. And uh, I noticed that all the kids were enjoying each other. They weren't on there iPads or on their cell phones, they were having fun with each other. This group is just the same. And uh, they're a pleasure to travel with and a pleasure to be around and certainly a pleasure to watch. I'm going to roll the dice on this one, Bill, um, in, in that you could tell it. Uh, what are our, What is a favorite story you have of, of covering pit basketball? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I think the first year we won the uh, Big East uh, tournament uh, at Madison Square Garden. Um, Dick Grode and I were get our, we got our coats at the coat rack and we were heading for the escalator and Jim Calhoun is doing an interview with the New Haven station. He stopped the interview and said, Dick, Bill, congratulations. That showed a side to me of Jim Calhoun I never knew existed, but more importantly, <laughs> the enormity of that. We won the Big East tournament, and then we were able to do it again. And uh, and Jeff has done a great job of bringing back the magic to the Peterson Event Center, and uh, I think it's only going to get better. Well, Bill, congratulations on 30 terrific years of calling the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, we're glad you're still the voice of the Pitt Panthers, and we'll hear hear you on Saturday tip at six o'clock against Boston College. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Jeff, and looking forward to it. Bill Hillgrove here on the Jeff Capel Show. And we continue. It is the start of WPIAL championships here at the Pete. One of Pitt's signees is playing tonight. We'll discuss as we continue here on the Jeff Capel Show and the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. We're at the Campus View Club, GBU Life Campus View Club. We were talking during the break. Like, I could listen to Bill yeah. read the internet to me. No question. No yeah. question. And I, the stories that he can tell on the air and – Yep. The ones off the air, I'm sure, even better. <laughs> and, you know, the, the beauty of Bill is it's about the kids. Absolutely. And the game. Yep. No question. He's, a, he's an icon himself, but he, it, it's, it's always about the moment, the players, the people that are participating, the fans, the experience. That's what makes him so special. The first of a dozen WPIL championships happening in your building. What does yeah. that mean for the program to have – people come and, and play championship games? Well, it's really, really cool, I mean, you know, to be able to have these kids earn the right to get to play, you know, in this beautiful arena. Um, you know, I'm grateful for everything that Heather and everyone has done here in my sixth year and the first five years to upgrade since, you know, I got here. And to have them get a chance to come here and experience this and play and to have people, fans, and things like that. It takes me back to when I was growing up and I was in high school. And if you got a chance, you know, to play at, at Duke or at Carolina or at NC State, those were the three AAU tournament. The Nationals, you know, my, going to my senior year, were at Wake Forest, were at Lawrence Joel Coliseum. And so 
it was always a big deal to have a chance to do that, and I'm pretty sure these kids feel the same way. I, My daughter's planning it tomorrow. I know. I, I'm going to ask you about that a little bit later because I'm actually doing play-by-play for oh, that wow. game. So the pressure okay. will be on me. Uh, <laughs> hey, I, I want to – before I ask you about, about Brandon, who's playing at nine tonight, um, for a lot of us, our high school competitive, organized career ends there. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously it didn't for you. But how do you look back at those high school days? They were – so when I was in high school where I'm from, at that time, you didn't start high school to 10th grade. So it was 10th, 11th, and 12th. Those were three of the best years of my life. I mean, my teammates, what we were able to accomplish, we were really good all three years. Uh, I thought my junior year, we were probably more talented than we were my senior year. We just ran into the semifinals. We ran into Jerry Stackhouse and his <laughs> Kinston High School team. They beat us. Um, to go to the state championship, but then we won it the next year. And I just look back on, I was very fortunate. I had a great high school coach who was like a second dad to me. Um, we had a really fun team. We were, we were very unique back in the early 90s because we were all around the same height. There was one guy that was taller than me. He was our sixth man, but we were all around, you know, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, to like six foot. We pressed the whole game, and we shot threes. So we were, like, very different from most teams. And what made us really good, our starting center, our big guy, was like 6'2". Wow. But he was, but he was about 240 pounds, and he was a, he was a, a all-state free safety in football. At and he's 40? Yeah, and he went to Carolina. But he was the back of the press. So you couldn't throw it long. Like, we just pressured and gambled because he took everything away back in the back. And so we played a unique style. We were very aggressive. And those are three of the best years, of, you know, of my life. What's something that you tell your team now that is channeled through that through your high school coach? Well, my high school coach <laughs> – so my high school coach, man, he was, a, he was a character. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie um, My Cousin Vinny. Oh, yeah. He's like that. So Seriously, he's he, like Vinny? He was like that. So <laughs> I don't – I never heard or found out the whole, like, the real story. But he's originally from Queens. But he was run out of New York. Like, he could not go back to New it's York. like Norman Dale in Hoosiers. Yeah. And so he ends up – my high school was in it's, – it's a town called Hope Mills. I'm from Fayetteville, but my high school was in Hope Mills. For any of you guys in here that ever watched the Andy Griffith show, Mayberry, Hope Mills was like Mayberry. Oh, jeez. Like it's small. It's tiny. And the only thing there is the Hope Mills Lake where everyone hangs out. And South, when I was coming up, Southview High School, that's where we were. And so for all the sporting events, for the games, football games, because we were good at everything, the whole town shut down. And it was packed at everything. And so my high school coach is this like New Yorker that's in Hope Mills. And, you know, he, ta- he, he always talked about fighting. Like, that was his thing. Like, it's a street fight, and you got to do this, and you got to do that. And the thing I remember the most, I was in 10th grade. It was my first year. It was pretty good. I was probably feeling myself. We were winning the game big, late. I'm still in the game. He yells something at me because he was an in-your-face confrontational guy. And I think I, I – I don't think I said anything back to him. I think I just gave him, like, man, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. So we're walking off the court after winning the game. We're going back, and he pulls me. As I'm going back, I'm laughing with my teammates. He pulls me in the training room, slams the door, and grabs me and has me up. And he's pro- Coach Miller was probably about six foot, you know, this six foot, you know, dude, and he just grabs me. He's like, if you ever talk to me like that or talk back to me again, I'll kill you. <laughs> and it's, it's interesting because I told like, he and I were really, really close. And I don't know why I did it, probably because I'm a coach's son. I felt bad. I didn't – I never have liked to disappoint people. I wrote him a letter that night, and I gave it to him the next day. And it was interesting because years later, he passed. I spoke at his funeral. His daughter gave me the letter. He had kept the oh, letter wow. for that long. Um, and so he was, he was unbelievable, unbelievable for me. That's really cool. Yeah, really, really cool. 
Have you had it, an opportunity? Brandon Cummings plays for Lincoln Park. They play at 9 o'clock. Yep. He's signed to play here next year. Yep. Uh, Nelly's brother. Yes. Have you had a chance to see him play much this year? I know I your schedule's a bit busy. No, I've gone you know, to check him out a couple times. He's having an outstanding season. Really talented. Uh, you know, he's he. Uh, you know, they have a very good team, very exciting team. Um, you know, he scores it. He can really, really score. Um, and I'm excited to get him here next year. I'm excited to watch them throughout this run. They won the state championship last year, and I'm excited to watch them throughout this run. But I'm really anxious to get our hands on them and we can start working with them. All right, I don't want to tell Jeff this, but his coach told me, you guys watch Blake, he'll pull up from there. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen any of that. I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen that. But he, he says he makes them from there. No, he That's makes thing. Them. He'll make them. He's definitely going to shoot it now. There's no question <laughs> about that. <laughs> and and like, like his brother, he's a winner. He's a winner. And – Comes from great stock. Mom and dad, the whole family, they're unbelievable people. Um, and when we started recruiting Nellie, actually when I went and did the home visit to see Nellie, uh, Bebo was there with the family. And I offered him then. You know, my big thing, and I'm, I'm a little bit different, old school or whatever, I like to do it face-to-face. -face. If I can, I like to offer a kid face-to-face. -face. I don't like to do it on the phone. I personally despise FaceTime, so I don't like to even do FaceTime, period. Um, I like to do it face-to-face. -face. And so, you know, right before, you know, Nelly committed, because he committed to me in the home, you know, I had offered Biba and told him that I, I've been – the other reason I wanted to come is that I wanted to see you face-to-face -face and do this. And so, uh, unbelievable family, um, obviously a winning pedigree, and we're anxious to have him in our program. So you're going to have a Biba and a Bud. Bob next year. Bob, yeah. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> hey, let's get an idea. You, may, you mentioned Brandon Cummings, obviously one of the best players. Of what the state of local high school basketball is like, some of the games we can watch for players to look out for. Mike White, the esteemed yeah. writer from the Post-Gazette, is going to join us next year on the Jeff Capel Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. We're inside the Peterson Events Center, one of the first of the 12 WPIAL championship games going on just down from us, because, uh, you know, we're looking up over everything. We're joined by Mike White from the Post-Gazette. What are some games to watch? Who are some teams that are really exciting this year? Well, I think I want to say first off, before we even get to that, Jeff, I, I, I heard Billy Hillgrove on with you. And his, I know, is Steelers and Pitt, but his best work, I, I say, is when he did. And I know there's some old-timers back here in the crowd that – when he did the games on Channel 13 and WPIL and state championships with Billy Cardell, um, and I used to watch him as a kid. That's where I first got the – and I, that was still sticks in my mind. It was, it was great back then. Um, and great to him uh, what yep. he's done. But um, a lot of great memories. For it. But who were the – you asked uh, who were the best – Yeah, who are some teams that, that – Well, I think the team that captures everybody's attention still is Lincoln Park because of, you know, the, we, as Jeff said, you got Brandon Cummings coming to Pitt and – Malik Thomas is a junior ranked among the top 10 juniors in the country, has offers from everywhere. And they were a state champion last year. They beat Newman Goretti and one of those Philly Catholic teams that, uh, that, that hardly ever lose to WPIL teams. And um, uh, they really proved themselves. They've played a really good schedule this year. They, they have a, uh, three losses outside. But those two, um, I think, really – I think capture, you know, you'd like to see the stars come out in WPL championships. Well, they're, they're here tonight, those two. And, you know, really when you think about it, Jeff, and, and, and you look back, and I was thinking about this, as far as a duo, um, you know, they probably are going to have to go down as two of the best kids we've had in the WPIL. Um, wow. And maybe – you know, it depends on probably what – your legacy a lot of times is depends on what you do after high school. But as far as high school, you know, you're talking about two kids going to Power 5 schools. They're going to both have over 2,000 points. How many teams in the last 30, 40 years from around here have had two kids the Luther brothers. going to the Power 5 schools? Right, but they but the one went to Elon and then one obviously right. came mean, here. Right, I mean, Shenley, DeWan Blair, and DJ Kennedy, and well, that DeAndre team Kane. was on – um, you know, that was a pretty good twosome. But as, as far was, as that cards. That team was insane. Yes. That then. was one of the best ever. I mean, but you're talking about, you know, they probably have to go down as, you know, especially with what they do here in the last few weeks is one of the best tandems ever in WPIL. How much do you see basketball at high school level be influenced by the success that the college teams, that specifically Pitt, is having? 
Like, do you see kids, like, get more into basketball, maybe kids that are in between sports, they might focus more on basketball because of the excitement of what's going on? And obviously that's something that could take some time to really kick in. Well, I, I, I think it definitely helps, and I think it, uh, you know, I think Pitt coming back now with Jeff Stewart and the year they had last year and fighting to get in the tournament this year. and uh, Kids notice. They do notice. There's no doubt. Um, and, you know, the WPIL doesn't – it's it's nowhere near what it was in the 60s and 70s. And um, But we have we, – we've had some pretty good kids here lately. I mean, I just mentioned the two, and uh, we've got a couple that left and go to prep schools. Um, we're highly rated. Um, but I, The kid I, at Moon – the kid at Moon, you know, I, I don't I don't know if he's ACC level, but he just committed to Youngstown State, but he's having a great year. I think I think he's been under-recruited probably. I think he's definitely a mid-major guy maybe at, at that low division one. More schools probably would have uh, got interested in him, but you're talking about Elijah Guillory. Um, but uh, he's been very good. He plays tomorrow night. Um, but, oh, it, it, it I think it definitely creates and, – and when Pitt has a local guy, I think it even adds uh, – a lot to the fan base, and it's nice to see a local kid play here. Uh, you know, you go back to when DeWan was here and other guys, and, um, the, you know, the Elite Eight team in 74, all five players were from the WPIL or City League. So it, it definitely helps. For communities, they may not – they their team's not in it. What's the energy like? What would be a reason well, – how would you describe what it's like at these WPIL championships? You know, I've been doing this at the Post-Gazette for over 40 years, been our high school editor. Um, and I've said for many years, and I think even more so in the last 10 years, WPIL semifinals, quarterfinals, and championships are the best thing in Western Pennsylvania high school sports. And I really believe it. Uh, and, I, and it's been proven out. I, I like it better than football um, because you look at the football playoff crowds in the last 10, 15 years, Jeff, they've gone down. The basketball stuff has gone up. Um, uh, you know, the crowds here, I think they had 23,000 for the all three days two years ago. The crowds have been really good. I, I think this is a great place. Uh, Palumbo, they used to have them there. For the big double headers, Palumbo's not big enough. This place is big enough. And, you know, I coach ninth grade at North Hills and, and help a little bit with the varsity. And we were just here two years ago playing, and uh, it, it was a great atmosphere. It's probably 6,000, and it is. It is a, uh, you know, Jeff said it, for kids to play on, you know, this isn't an NBA arena, but it's close to one. Uh, and for kids, it's really special. But I, I think the semifinals in WPIL basketball are, is the best in the championships, uh, the best things in high school sports of the sports year in western Pennsylvania. Gyms are packed, the electricity, uh, it, it's really great. I love it. You mentioned you've coached. Or are, are you still coaching? Yeah, I've coached for a long time in the ninth grade at North Hills and help a little bit with. So, those. how does that impact you when you watch games and how you see games? How you the questions you ask, things like that, having that understanding of being a coach. Um, I think it's only helped me. I think maybe um, even coaches kind of a lot of them know what I do and maybe respect me a little more. I'm not saying I, you know, I'm the high school head coach or anything like that, but. Um, um, you know, and uh, it's helped me even get stories. Um, um, I get to see a lot of kids uh, when they're younger. Um, you know, I coached AAU when I was younger and coached even T.J. McConnell for about four or five years. And, oh, you did a good uh, job with him. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I'm th I think I'm the main reason he is where he is. Um, but um, uh, it, it, it's been a lot of fun. I love it. And, uh, um you know, I had some good play. You know, I had a team you mentioned. Was, these guys were in eighth grade. We moved them up. My ninth grade team that year, we moved. We had Malik Thomas and Royce Parham on on the, as eighth graders. We moved them up to play ninth grade. Um, that was a pretty good team. You're a good uh, coach that year, weren't yeah. you? <laughs> well, Malik couldn't play half the year for reasons I'm not going to get into. But uh, but yeah, that was uh, that was pretty easy that year. Well, Mike, I know uh, you're going to be covering a capel tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, We're going to ask Jeff about what it's like to have your daughter play in a WPAL championship in your home gym as we continue. Thanks for joining us, Mike. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Enjoyed it. As Thank we you. continue on the Jeff Capel Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Tomorrow on the court at, here at the Peterson Events Center, your daughter is going to be playing in a WPAL championship game.
How will you watch that? <laughs> I'll probably sit up in my office and watch it. Um, you know, it's interesting. Our daughter, uh, Cameron, she is like – she likes basketball. She doesn't love it. But she loves being on a team. And so she could actually be good, like really good, if she worked at it. But she just likes being on a team. And so um, – it was really cool. I, I watched – they played last Saturday to get here. And they got beat in that game to come to the Pete last year um, in, in, in the exact same game. And so I streamed it. I was getting ready for Virginia Tech, but I, I streamed the game. We watched it. And it was really cool to see she and her teammates happy and excited to have a chance to come to the Pete. That's all they had been talking about. And to have that opportunity is pretty cool. I mean – do you have memories of your father? Like, how, like how, did, how is it to watch your children play the game that you love? Yeah, I mean, you know, my dad was probably different from most parents. Um, he was not – but my dad would come to the games. He would sit by himself. He would sit, find, like, a place, like, way up in the corner, and he would sit. He wouldn't talk to me about the game unless I asked him. His thing was, I, I just want to be your dad. I'm not your coach. I'm not going to – we get in the car and – tell me everything I did wrong or everything I did good. I had to ask him those things. You know, my dad was – so my dad was a military guy first before he got into coaching. He was in the Army. He was 82nd Airborne. So we were kind of raised like that, you know, with being on – I mean, all these things. And my dad – like, I remember saying to him after ninth grade, like, I, I want to be really, really good. Like, I want you to push me. I want you to – he was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm just not. He said, I'm not your coach. I don't want to be your coach. I want to be your dad. Here's what I will do. You know, you don't have a license right now. I'll get you to the gym. You know, I'll get you there. I'll get you to the places you need to be. But if he said, like, hey, I'm leaving tomorrow at 8, like it wasn't like he was coming in to wake me up. Like I had to be up, dressed and ready, and I knew my dad. So, like he said he was leaving at 8, that meant he was leaving at 7.50. <laughs> and so and if I didn't he left me like so that was his thing and his thing was like you have to want it I can't want it for you I don't want to want it for you you have to want it so that's been my approach with my kids like I, I just want them to be happy I want them to do what they want to do if they're involved in it be you know like finish it out be a great teammate that's what I tell all of them my middle daughter my middle child does not do any sports she does not want to do sports my son loves sports. My big thing is, like, if you're going to do it, the very first thing, you got to be a great teammate. Like, really, really be a great teammate. And I'll get on them if I see them not doing that. There are so many lessons from the game. Mm -hmm. Have you seen your daughter, like, like some of those lessons are, are permeating her personality and the way she handles yes. herself? Yes. So she is um, – my, my oldest daughter is so much like me. It's scary. <laughs> she is like me and my dad, like, like combined. So she is uh, very quiet. She doesn't like being around a lot of people. She does not like or want or crave attention at all. My middle child wants all of it. <laughs> um, and so she has a little bit of anxiety at games. So my wife and I really aren't allowed to go because she gets nervous when we go. So I'll, like, try to sneak and go. Like, I'll go and I'll, like, hide behind the bleachers or, you know, whatever. I've kind of stopped doing that because she'll see me and say, like, why are you trying to hide? Everyone knows who you are. <laughs> so that's why if, when they come here, I'll probably – this place is big enough where she probably won't be able to see where I am. So, I'm, you know, thinking about, that, I, yeah, thinking about that, I probably won't be in my office because that's where she'll expect me to be. Because now we've told her. Yeah, so yeah. I'll figure out somewhere to be. I just – but it's really cool to see being a part of a team has helped her get past some of that. It's helped her, it's cool. you know, to, to – to, it's okay to be around people. It's okay to – she's so much like me. Like, she's kind of reserved until she gets to know you and feels comfortable. Then once she, she feels comfortable, then she'll let her personality come out. That's how I am. Well, good luck to Cameron. Thank you. That's a really cool opportunity to get to play here at the Peterson Event Center. When we come back, he's still the king, but immediately you're going to say Michael is better, <laughs> or some people might. We're going to talk about LeBron James and what he did last night and what he continues to do at 
39 yeah. here on the Jeff Cable Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Last night, LeBron James had 19 points in the fourth <clears throat> quarter. He led a 21-point comeback. He's in year 21. <laughs> yeah. When he started playing basketball, Scottie Pippen, Reggie Miller, Carl Malone were still in the game. Gas was a buck 60 <laughs> when he started buck playing 60. basketball. What's your reaction to seeing a 39-year-old still play at that level this deep into the season? You mentioned the grind. It's the grind for them, too. It's incredible. I mean, it really, really is when you look at – the numbers that he's putting up this season. Um, it's a testament to how he takes care of himself, how he trains, how he takes care of his body. He invests a lot of money in his body, um, and that's why he's been able to have the sustained greatness and the longevity and to play this way at 39 years old. He is 40 points from 40,000. Yeah. Is that untouchable or <laughs> – you know, it's interesting because everyone thought Kareem's was untouchable. Like, that was the one record that you thought that, you know, nobody could touch. So, I wouldn't say it's untouchable. I think if you look at some guys, there's probably someone coming along, some Maybe next Luka. prodigy. But that's, that's the one I was thinking of. I mean, you think about it. He started at 18, like LeBron. He's putting up numbers. He has the type of game – that you can play for a long time because his game doesn't rely on athleticism. You know, he is angles. He is, as long as he takes care of his body, that's the big thing. Can he take care of his body to have it sustained like LeBron has? Or you could be seven foot like Jokic and just like do yeah. everything. He's insane too. He's insane. I mean, the NBA is in a great place. It's the most talent. It's, it's so much talent in these guys. I don't think people appreciate how good these guys are. When I worked with the USA team in 2014 with the World Cup and 2016 with the Olympics, I had an opportunity every day to, like, work these guys out. That was part of my role on the staff. And, man, these guys are so good. Like, they have they have the really good ones, like LeBron. Like, the, they've mastered the game of basketball. So it's, it's really cool to see. Panthers on the road at Boston College. We'll take a look at the Eagles as we continue on the Jeff Cable Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. We're in the GBU Live Campus View Club here at the Peterson Events Center. In some respects, when you have a seven-footer named Quentin Post, that is <laughs> aptly named, yeah. but he could also be like Quentin Triple, yeah. like he, Quentin Midrange. He, yes. He's got that kind of game. He's very good. He can really shoot. He's 40% from three. Uh, can score with his back-to-basket inside. Very skilled, can pass it. They run a lot of their offense through him. He's older. Um, he's a very, very good player. Yeah, when someone has that kind of size, you try to – like, how do you try to defend size? Yeah, well, you know, hopefully you have some size that can help negate their size inside. Um, he's a difficult matchup because of, because of his ability to play on the perimeter. Whenever you have a big guy like that that can shoot like he can shoot, that it makes it a little bit more difficult because sometimes you can get mismatches. They put you in ball screens. They stress you out there, stretch you out. Um, and, and as a team, they shoot well. They shoot very well as a team. They're a good team. I don't think their record, you know, really reflects that. But they're a very good team. They're really good at home. Um, they're very physical. So their coach came from Clemson. He worked for Brad Brownell before he became the head coach at College of Charleston, one of their other assistants, uh, came from Clemson two years ago um, there. So they play very similar. They're very physical defensively. That's what they pride themselves on is defense. But they've been really scoring the basketball well this year. Hmm. So what you're saying is it's actually a good conference that's very deep. <laughs> huh. Is yeah. everybody listening? Yeah, no. That's, is everybody it listening? Is. <laughs> if you look at the numbers, you may not think I that. Know, I know, I <laughs> know. Check out any publication tomorrow, and you'll see some of Jeff's comments <laughs> from what he said about it. Hey, our thanks to Bill Hillgrove <laughs> for joining us, to Mike White from the Post-Gazette, to Amanda King and Joel Nelson, to Casey Garrow, Matt Plisga, Allison Rubin. Panthers at Boston College, 5.30 pregame with Bill Hillgrove and Curtis Aiken, and then tip at 6 o'clock right here yep. on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network.